Well, here we have a brown lump of metal. It doesn't look like much at the moment, but it's basically the brains of an oil burning furnace. Even with the great vastness of the internet, I had a bit of trouble trying to find out, you know, information about these type of control valves. Now what you're looking at is a constant level oil control valve. And this is a device that's used on uh, some old school oil furnaces from back in like the 1950s and 60s. And you would see it on a variety of furnaces like those from Kenmore and Coleman and you know probably Montgomery Ward or Sears and you know a bunch of others like that from back in the day. And what this did is it metered the fuel, flow of fuel from an outside tank or a tank that was like you know held on the side of the furnace and it regulated it at a constant rate into the burner and that was your thermostat or you know your heat regulating control. So as you turn the valve more oil would flow into the furnace. Now this is a device that on the surface doesn't look like much but once you dig into it you find out that it's fairly intricate and kind of interesting. Now a little bit of backstory. The camp that I'm a member of, we have an old school furnace and you know it was put in the 1950s or 60s I'm guessing and it has one of these oil control valves on it. So anyways I had heard that the uh, there was oil leaking out of the valve and well I can never leave anything alone so of course you know when I found out that there was oil leaking out of this thing, I had to take all the screws out, tear it apart, and see what was inside. I mean, what's the first thing that you do when something's not working? You tear it apart completely and uh, either find out what the problem is or make it worse. So we started tearing apart this thing, and lo and behold, there's a whole lot of moving internal parts in it. You remove the top cover, and you gain access to even some more adjustment screws. I mean, there's uh, low speed and high speed flow rates. There's even a uh, adjustment screw. Well, I guess it's on this side here. It has a little brass cap over it, which of course, you know, I dug it out of there with a pick to, you know, try and adjust it because, you know, you do that. But you normally don't have to do that because that kind of sets the high speed flow rate, I believe. So you remove these three uh, extra screws right here, and this whole top plate kind of comes off. Well, not like that. So now you're getting into the bowels of this oil control valve, and you'll find that it looks a lot more like an, uh, you know, an engine carburetor than it does a normal uh, furnace part. Well, at least to me anyways. And for a second, we'll back up here and just give you some basics on this. This right here is the oil inlet or fuel oil and this is where your fuel is coming in so it goes through basically the control valve here and it exit out the bottom and this is what goes into the burner on your furnace this back here come to find out is actually a uh, cleaning port or an inspection port or a service port or whatever you want to call it for a filter now you should have a filter you know upstream of your uh, you know your inlet here if you're running a big tank or whatever that's how we have ours on a 200 plus gallon tank there's a regular you know 1A30 or whatever it is filter and then it runs down and through here into the furnace however there's an additional filter that's part of this uh, control valve right down here in this you know cavity in the body now it's not like a super fine filter it's basically just a screen and this one has a little bit of corrosion on it. it shouldn't be you know dirty like that but basically that's your final defense of uh, any dirt or debris that comes through the inlet it gets filtered out there before it goes into the control valve now I just love these old-school type of uh, pieces of mechanics and machinery like this you know and things like this can work for decades you know Basically, I believe the one on our camp was working for, you know, 60 plus years in its current state and it never had any problems. Now, granted, I had to actually take it apart and service it because the float here, the main float, had developed a pinhole in it. But being that it was brass, we were able to solder it back shut 
and get bring it back into life and keep it going. Who knows? It might get another 50 years out of it. You know, nowadays you probably just have a potentiometer or something that read the float level and, uh, you know, controlled a servo valve, you know, that ran off a 12 volts or something. But you didn't have that option back then. You had to make something robust and resilient and use the simple machines that you had available at the time. I mean, and who can argue with the results? I mean, like 50 plus years of reliability out of something like this? You think you'd ever get that out of some kind of electronic device? So we'll continue ripping this thing apart, but before we take out the float and all that stuff, basically there, you see you have two brass floats in here. You got your main, and then your secondary, auxiliary, emergency, whatever you want to call it. This float here, uh, it raises up whenever the oil level comes up to a certain point, and it closes a needle valve back here. Same thing as in a carburetor. And what that does is, it controls the oil level up and down, and keeps it at a certain point, just like a carburetor. Now it may be hard to see, but if you look down in there, there's a little slot in that round hole. That's the slot that the oil actually flows through uh, when it goes down into the furnace. And that little uh, turn uh, dial up on top, what that does is, when it's closed, it pushes this down all the way and as you can see there, when you push down on this valve, you can't see any of that slot. When you lift up on it, you start seeing that slot open up. Well, that's the metering valve for when you turn that knob on top. This plate right here actually moves up as you turn the knob. Whoops. So as you turn that dial, that plate right there moves upwards and it allows that plunger to also move upwards and expose more of that slot and it meters more fuel into the furnace. So that's where your constant level comes into play. You know when you have an oil tank outside whether it's this you know all the way full or it's almost empty as long as the bottom of that tank is somewhere above this valve right here it's gonna gravity feed fl uh, fuel right into it but this float right here is going to stop the level within the control valve to this point right here. So as long as you'll always have fuel sitting right here at this point, you're always going to have the same you know, static pressure that's pushing through that little slot that's opening and flowing into the furnace. If you didn't have this valve, you'd have a, uh, you know, more heat coming out of your furnace when the tank was full compared to when it was empty. Now when you rotate this uh, dial right here, it moves this upwards and that's what opens up your plunger down there in the valve. You can also see that little uh, poppet right there is a visual indicator of uh, how open the valve is. And you can see that there's some little set screws down there and one up top that set the uh, bottommost point and the uppermost point of the fuel flow. So that's how they set the different, uh, you know, bottom and top flow rates of these uh, valves. So now we're taking apart everything. And out come the two floats here. And in the back side is your main needle valve. Right there. Keep track of that spring. It has these little tangs here for alignment against the back. And when this seats down the whole way at the bottom, it closes off the valve, and it doesn't allow any oil to flow through there. Now you see that this needle right here goes up through this brass body with some threads on it, and there's a uh, square nut, sort of, and a, uh, you know, a place for a screwdriver here. This is where you will adjust the height of the needle in case you need to adjust the main float here to set your oil level right. You can adjust this up and down to get the float to shut off the oil flow at the right level. Now the easiest way to do this is with oil flowing into it and basically start low and you can kind of keep adjusting the level higher. If you, uh, you know, fill it up too high the first time you'll have to drain this whole reservoir out and start over again to get your right oil level set. 
and don't lose this copper square washer that's on top here this helps set the level of everything too so here's a quick shot of the dual floats and the little on off valve here at the back and when that front float is down it allows fuel to come into the back here as long as this float is also down now what this front float here is is a safety valve and that's why it's in its own little reservoir up front here with this little notch cut out if the main valve here doesn't shut off and it fills up with fuel to the point that it starts overflowing into the secondary chamber it will lift up this valve here and shut off the fuel flow so essentially when you pick up on this lever here and shut this thing off you're tripping the safety valve which is really locking the needle in the down position and stopping any fuel flow into the control valve so your fuel comes in this part right here down to here it comes up through the uh, needle valve here whenever it's open it fills up the whole cavity here and when you open up the control valve it flows through the little notch down here down through the bottom and out there I love old school uh, you know identification tags like this so when you push down on the lever back here to open up the control valve for the run position it pushes this lever here upwards and it catches on the lever here for your emergency uh, stop valve now say that the oil level comes up too high and you know it's overrunning past this main float valve what that'll do is it'll slightly lift up on this and it'll trigger that to shut off and it'll stop your oil flow so between the two valves here as long as the needle valve doesn't get too gummed up you shouldn't uh, have any oil overflow problems I bet you a lot of times with a good cleaning you know get all the grunge and the sludge out of the bottom of it you can usually get them back going without any uh, major drama so if you need to adjust the set points on the uh, you know knob here of course all the way clockwise is the off position and when you're in that position you can see there that the uh, the notch is completely covered it's seated down at the bottom stopping all flow now when you turn this thing here slightly counterclockwise like that what that does is it lifts up and that right there is the uh, low fire mode and you can see the notch is just barely open so that's your low speed you know number one setting now as you open it up more it keeps exposing more and more of that notch and there's your top fire mode your high mode and that's where it comes into play you know adjusting the uh, the bottom set point top set point or you know whichever and that's what sets your uh, your limits on that you want to make sure when this thing's in the off position that that little valve down there is uh, fully seated at the bottom otherwise you're going to have residual fuel you know trying to drain into there and if you adjust this thing too high you know compared to what your furnace is specced out for you'll be putting too much oil into it for what it's designed I'm guessing that's why there's a brass cap here on the uh, the high level adjustment to limit you from going overboard on it you know if you crank the thing up too high and uh, put too much fuel into it I mean you burn your place down so yeah there's your basic oil control valve and uh, how it works I hope maybe you know the eight people out there that are still trying to run one of these furnaces you know it'll give you a, a helpful hint if you're ever trying to keep it going personally I love seeing you know old school stuff like this still in operation there's nothing wrong with it you know mechanical systems like this I mean they'll just keep going almost indefinitely you know it kinda sucks that maybe like one of the internal parts wears out or develops a problem and you know you gotta try to fix it or find a replacement for it but heck 
any type of device that can go 50, 60 years in operation without any problems is pretty good in my book. So yeah, keep those classics going out there, you know. Can't be too many of them left out there and you know, once they're gone, they're gone. I don't see anybody putting, you know, brand new installations with constant level oil control valve furnaces installed in them. So hopefully going through this a little bit, you know, if you ever got one that needs a uh, service or, you know, replacement parts, I would almost be willing to bet you could find a carburetor type uh, brass float that you could adapt and make work on this. Because the little float arm that uh, is soldered to the top of it, you know, it comes off. Believe me, I found out when I was trying to solder this one together, I heated it up too much and the whole top plate came off. So, as long as you can get a round float, you know, roughly that same size, you can adapt something over to make this work. So yeah, this isn't just a mystery box down on the bottom of your furnace that you, you turn the dial and it puts heat into it. It's a pretty simple mechanical device and uh, yeah, anybody can fix it if you uh, take your time and you know learn how to figure it out hopefully get another few decades out of it I bought this entire furnace at an auction for two dollars you know the rest of it was pretty rusty but I figured you know just for the control valve and the floats and stuff you know it'd be worth getting for that I mean, it's Friday night. I just rebuilt an oil control valve. What did you do?